I was driving and uh, suddenly I felt my lips numbing, my nose numbing, my right face numbing. So I called my wife. I was on my way to go pick up my son at the residence where he stays. And uh, my wife goes, you should call 911. <laughs> she is always ahead of me, you know. But because I'm a man, <laughs> all right. You, you know, I, can you make this sound a little bit, I don't know, it's bouncing back in me. And uh, I feel like, ah, you know, I can handle that. <laughs> How many men are in the house here? Thank you, Jesus. So I got my son driving, and the numbness is increasing. I'm on dear foot. And uh, suddenly my eyes want to close by themselves, and I'm not sleepy. Interesting. I managed to corner out and call a nurse. My speech is sounding weird at that moment. My right eyes is tinkling and I can't feel it anymore. And then after a few words she said, the ambulance. I said, in my heart I feel like, ambulance? Yeah, ambulance. You know, it's amazing when you're illiterate in a domain. Um, you think you know, but you don't, right? So I'm with my son. I mean, I was saying to myself, I could just lost conscience on dear food driving. You see how God is good? Yeah. Sometimes to celebrate him, you need to understand what could have happened that didn't happen. Right? Not just what he did, but what could have happened that didn't happen. I could have been driving and go unconscious on dear foot, 110 kilometers per hour with my son. But it didn't happen. Yes. It did not happen. It could have happened. Didn't happen. You know, I, I got in the at the hospital and of course I, I was having some IVs and all this stuff in the ambulance already and uh, they asked me 25 different questions, repeating them and stuff. These people are just amazing. The only thing that was in my mind beside many things related to me, it was my mouth. I said to myself, let me not walk, but this mouth of mine, I need it. <laughs> Are you hearing me, somebody? I really need my mouth. Don't you think so I need my mouth? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But then the doctors are running around. I feel like, why are they so in a hurry, all right? So I want to stand up, and this man took a note and said, lay down. I, I, I didn't get it because I didn't have any pain. Sometimes that's the way God deals with us. You don't have pain. Yet you're dying and you don't know. It's called a silence killer. I never thought that I would be in the hospital laying down. I visited everybody in the hospital. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm not in the hospital. Yeah. I want to thank everybody. My wife, Claudia, Pastor Jenny, all our leadership, Everybody in this house, intercessors, I don't know, you name it. I received so many texts. I couldn't answer them to you, but it meant a lot. But the most important things, I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. I bless God for that. Don't let me talk much about that stuff. Let's leave it out. I'm recovering pretty good. Just dragging one leg behind, but no big deal. It's going to end up, it's going to strengthen. Amen? 
you know, you, you, you feel like you've been hit by a truck. <laughs> That's the only explanation I can give, right? So you, you, you feel like you've been hit by a truck, and uh, sometimes you feel strong, sometimes you feel weaker, but at the end of the day, I know yeah. my Redeemer lives. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm here this morning as a testimony to say it, it's not over for me. And it's not over for you. I'm not done. And I'm not finished. And that's why I'm still standing here by his mercies. Allow me to read one portion of scripture and preach to you. I may not be able to run around the way I used to do nowadays, but it's good sometimes to cool it down and stay in one spot. Amen. I say Amen. John 11, 18 to 23. John 11, 18 to 23. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary stayed at her house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you. Jesus then said to her, your brother will rise again. Amen. Somebody say with me, your brother rise. will rise, rise again. Yeah. Say with me, I, I will rise, rise. Again. again. You shall rise again. You shall rise again. Last night, in his mercy, the Lord visited me. And he said to me, we are on the verge of a spiritual revolution. That is accelerating us into a place of expansion. He said to me, that he is not finished with me. I'm not done yet, and I am not finished. I come to say that to the principalities and to the witnesses of this house Hallelujah. and the angels and the heavenlies. I am not done, and I am not finished, and God is not finished with me yet. That's what I come to speak to you this morning. Tell your neighbor you are not finished yet. You are not finished yet. The devil has attacked my body. He has attacked my mind. The devil has attacked my emotions. He has attacked my souls to crush my spirit so that he can set me off course. Demonic course. Demonic forces. Demonic courts have signed verdict to destroy us. They have ruled a legislation to terminate my life and dreams by the end of 2019. Satanic vows have been cut to cut short my life and my legacy. But thank God. Yes, I said, thank God. He remembered his promises to me and my children. He remembered his promises to me and my wife. He remembered his promises to me and this church and to you. Thank God that he remembers you and he remembers your family. I am not finished and I am not done. Marakaya no Sakaya. He has kept me still in the game. Yeah. He still kept me in the game. Because he remembers promises to his sons and his daughters to this house. You are for a sign and for wonders. And therefore he kept me in the game. Cross point. I'm standing here and those who are watching. As a testimony that God... The God of my tight places. The God of Elijah. 
the God of Cross Point, the God of the Jalos family, the God of you and your children and you and your dreams and your promises and the promise and the purpose of your life and the legacy for your children. The God who remembers me and kept me in the game, the same God is faithful today and he's speaking to you. It's not over yet for you. I am not out of the game. I'm still in the game. I have a place in the game. I am the VIP, most valuable player on my team. I am still in the game. I'm the capital and I'm the captain of my field and my family. I am the head of this ministry and of my family. It's not over. I am still in the game. Mandola kaya mande porakatia. I have to be in the game. I have led you to many victories. Hidden in tough moments. That's why God said today it's not finished. I am not finished. We are just entering in a new beginning. Another beginning. There are still rivers to cross. There are still mountains to climb. There are still territory to take. There are still great things to achieve. There are still legacy to establish. There are still landmarks to leave to your generation. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Am I speaking to a family this morning? It's not over for you. It's not over for you. It's not over for you. Malagadaya. There are still curriculum to write. There are still men and women to raise. There are still ladders to climb. There are still nations to encounter. There are still miracles to demonstrate. There are still breakthroughs to take on. There are still business to create. It's not over yet. Welcome to the new beginning. Maragados. Ecclesiastic, we must have a seat. Ecclesiastic 8998 says, Let your garment be white and let your head never lack oil. <laughs> there is an oil on my head. I say there is an oil on my head. There is an abundance oil on my head. Then there is an oil flowing on your head. It's like the purity of the oil of Aaron. It is the oil that cannot be perverted. It is the Lord that loses not his power and his strength. There is oil that flows on my head. It is that oil that sets us above. It is that oil that sets us apart. It is that oil that distinguishes us. I am not done yet. I'm still in the game. There are still goals to score for our generation. There are still goals to score for the nation. There are still goals to score for your children. There are still goals to score. There are still landmarks to establish. It is not over. Don't worry, I won't fall. I'm standing by the angels of the Lord. I say I'm standing surrounded by the angels of the Lord. Because of the oil that is above my head, the angels are watching over me. I'm standing. Magadosh. Yeah. You know, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, I have come to realize who I am in my weaknesses and my strength through this time. I've come to realize my brokenness, my shortcoming. I've come to realize where I am weak. I woke up to discover the dry bones in the life of Elijah, me. I woke up to discover the worm the rawness. But I woke up to discover something. The oil of my head is scarce. It's rare. It's rare. Yes. It is scarce to preach the good tidings. I woke up to realize my strength in him. <laughs> I'm not done. I am still in the game. I refuse to give up and die or walk away. Because God has entrusted me rare oil and rare wisdom that my generation needs. Yes, indeed, I have a rare wisdom 
because it is strong in substance to build generational landmarks. I'm not nobody. I am somebody. I'm dangerous. I'm powerful. I am strong. I am wise. You may not understand what I'm saying, but I declare to you, this oil is rare. I'm not done. I'm still in the game. So are you. You're not done. We are in the game together. I say we are in the game together. My presence steals comfort and safety. I can't go anywhere. Not yet. He kept me in the game. I might have a leg dragging behind and, <laughs> and refusing to follow. But I'm still here. I'm still in the game. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I might have to cut on some red meat and uh, some Alberta AAA and few restaurants and more Vietnamese soup <laughs> and some pepper soup from Nigeria, Harabo, Sanda, Sister BC, get ready. But I'm still in the game. I might have to regulate better my scheduling, take few naps, many naps. Am I speaking to somebody? Sleep a little more. Yeah. Sleep a little bit earlier. Yes. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. But yet it's okay. I'm still in the game. I don't know. You know when you flirted with death, <laughs> knowing that today could have been a different day. Today could have been a different day for my family, for my wife, for my children, for you all. It could have been a different day. Today could have been a day of despair, confusion, weeping. I have to stay in the game. Even if it's for one more shout. One more hallelujah. hallelujah. One more praise. One more amen. amen. I have to stay in the game even if it's for one more talking tongue. On. One more prophecy. Yes. One more preaching. Yes. One more shout. Yes. Can somebody help me say yeah? yeah. Somebody say yeah. yeah. One more shout yeah. yeah. One more shout yeah. yeah. Even if it's for that. I still need to stay in the game. Arababa Yandoya. I'm here today to give you just probably one prophecy. No matter what hit you down, if you can look up, you will get up again. No matter what hits you down, if you can look up, you shall rise. Jonah said, I'm entangled by the ropes. I'm being drawn down to the depths of the sea. I'm entangled. I can't help. I'm drowning. Yet, I will rise my head to the sanctuary of my God. <laughs> no matter what hid you down, if you can look up, you will get up. I prophesy to few people today, you will rise again. Your brother will rise again. Your business will rise again. Your dream shall rise again. It shall rise again. This is the story of two girls and one boy, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. It is a known story.
John 1, 1, 3 says, these are the Martha that anointed Jesus, fed him in the home, receive him and welcome him, show him love and care. These two girls were fully committed to serve God. Fully. But that didn't exempt them from trouble and misfortune, tragedy, and curveballs. Ladies and gentlemen, it happened to us all. Regardless of your commitment to God, you can fast until you become anorexic and pray till the mountain moves. But tragedy happened to us all. Their commitment to God did not exempt them from such. Look at the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Rahab, Moses, all these ones have gone in the hot waters, the caves, the dungeons, the desert, the wilderness, the tight places. But yet one thing rise from their spirits. Still God will raise me up. I speak to you this morning. No matter how tight are your tight places, no matter how deep are your valleys, no matter how hot are your deserts, and no matter how scarce are your wildernesses, let your spirit sing the choir, the chorus of the men that have gone ahead of us. Still God will raise me up again. No matter how long you've been in those places, still God will raise you up again. No matter how strong that I've tied you down and how many years you've tried without success and breakthrough, I come to prophesy to you, let the chorus of our forefathers rise within your spirit. Still God will raise me up again. You may have lost your marriage, still God will raise it up again. You may have lost your finances, still God will raise it up again. You may have struggled with your business, still God will raise it up again. Your children may have gone astray, but still God will raise them up again. I wish I have a witness to this. Still God will raise it up again. Tell your neighbor, this is not the end. It's another beginning. It's a greater beginning. It's a more awesome beginning. It's a more powerful beginning. It's a more glorious beginning. It's a more colorful beginning. Am I speaking to somebody? Talk to your neighbor and say, welcome to the new beginning. Maragoda Vazegedosh. <laughs> they serve Jesus, committed to Jesus, welcomed Jesus, anointed Jesus, and Jesus left, and Lazarus was sick. What do you do when sickness comes home? The same home where Jesus is. <laughs> Let me make it plain for you. You may not be sick. But what do you do when your finances are sick? <laughs> when your marriage is sick, what do you, what do, you do?
You go to hospital. You lay down there. It doesn't matter the gun you're wearing if it's showing your butt or not. The nurses come and help you pee. You have stopped counting the day you didn't brush your teeth or shower. When you're sick in the hospital, you're not worrying about what perfume, Chanel 7 or 10, <laughs> or which Gucci shoe I should be wearing laying down in my sleeping bed, Harabo Sandaya. What hair do should I show? The nurses are coming. The doctors are coming. I need to look very presentable and dignified. Can I have my red lipstick right now? <laughs> when you're sick, you don't give a rip. Who's watching you? Oh, your face is not being washed. Oh, you didn't put your chopstick or lipsticks or Gucci shoes or brush your teeth. What kind of breath you are pulling out of your mouth? You don't give a rip. You just want help. Am I speaking to somebody? There come a time in life where you don't care about your dignity or your notoriety or your honor. What you care about? Nurse, come whenever you want. I'm naked or not coming whenever you want. You want to push me, push me. Speak to me, I will obey. I just want help right now. Today I'm standing here, I'm not sick. I'm just sick and tired. <laughs> Maraga dosha. I say I'm not sick. I'm just sick and tired. Do I have a witness here this morning? You may not be sick, but you are sick and tired. Sometimes life come on you. You are not sick, but you are sick and tired. You are not discouraged, but you are sick and tired. Because you have enough of it. Somebody say enough is enough. Hey, I'm not sick. I'm not sick and tired. I tell the nurse, he said, what do you do? I say, I'm a preacher. He said, what? I say, I'm a preacher. I say, can you not see I'm a preacher? <laughs> can you not see my walk? I walk like a preacher. I talk like a preacher. I stand like a preacher. My passion is like a preacher. I say to God, yeah, I'm going to get out. I will get mad at you a little bit, and then I will repent a little bit, and then I will come out and be a better preacher, and be a better pastor, and be a better father, and be a better husband, and be a better apostle. What happens when something is sick in the house? You know, when something is sick, we want to cut it off, am I right? Huh? It's rotted, you, you cut it off, you want to throw it away. You want to get it out. When something is sick, you want to separate it from what is not sick, isn't it? That's not what they do. If the cells are rotted, they want to cut off the cells so that they don't contaminate the healthy one. When something is sick, we want to get it out. That's not what we do. But what happens when what is sick is mixed with you in such a way it cannot be separated? And what happened when what is sick is what you love? If you kill it, you kill him. If you kill it, you kill her. What do you do when sickness come home? Hallelujah. They said, Send for Jesus. <laughs> Go get Jesus. This matter is too complicated. Go get Jesus. I'm closing. When they went to see Jesus in John 11, 1, 2, 2 3, they didn't say, Jesus, you remember this family when you were thirsty 
and you walk in and they give you a beautiful, fresh water. The woman, actually Mary, the one who anointed you, Jesus, you remember that? Uh, Martha, yeah, yeah, yeah. These people love you. They didn't say that. God saved me not because of what I did for him. No, it's not good enough. God saved me not because of achievement or work. And God saved you not because of who you are and what you do. They didn't mention one credential, one credit or what they did for Jesus. But rather they said, the one you love is in need. Makatoya. Am I speaking to somebody? This is grace manifested. This is grace personified. The one you love is sick. The one you love, not the one who, who does things, not the one who planted, not the one who preached, not the one who ran, not the one, no, no credential. There is nothing I have done and there is nothing you will ever do that will deserve heaven to move on your behalf. But because he loves me. Rabondaya. If somebody catch this, you will be free from rejection right now. Because God loves you. Because God loves you. Because God loves you. When you understand he loves you, doesn't matter who hates you, you still feel okay. Is there anybody here who knows God loves them? Is there any person who can testify of the love of God? Yes, God loves you. Because God loves them. You know, three weeks ago, they sent me a video from the intercession team. And Sister Fomizili, am I pronouncing this right? Stand up. I want you to give a clap offering to this vessel. And I want we give a club offering to the intercession team led by Prophetess. Please. <laughs> Prophetess Martha sent me the video. The power of God came upon her and she screamed, Ah! The was crying. You were whipping my death, wrestling with death to secure my life. That's how much God loved me. He will pick up somebody from far, ignite them, anoint them to stand in the gap, wrestle against death, wrestle sickness, wrestle attack on your behalf. Just because he loves you, you are here because somebody woke up and prayed for you. You don't even know who the person is. You are the result of the prayer of your mama. You are the result of the prayer of an individual in the world. Just because God loves you, he can ignite somebody in India who never seen you. Give them your name and begin to pray. God loves me. That the Holy Ghost came open flow. That's Evangelist Lori's mother, our wife. Evangelist Lori's wife. She ran to her husband screaming. I just got a vision. The devil want to kill a person with a heart attack. Let's pray. That's what he spoke to her husband. She wrote a petition. Because God loves you. He will activate anybody, anywhere, any place to keep you in the game. It's humbling. It's humbling. Somebody's praying for you right now. So you don't lose your mind. Somebody's praying for you right now. So you don't get out of the game. Somebody's praying for you right now. So you don't give up. Somebody's praying for you right now for your next breakthrough. God have agents in the earth. Because he loves me. He will speak to Pastor Vanessa in Ottawa. On Sunday night. Non-sleeping, pushing for the life of Apostle. Ottawa. You know, I say God doesn't do that because of what we do. Listen to me.
or just human being? You are just a human being. There is nothing in you that will make God do something for you. No, none. Your righteousness, prayer, fasting, your tithing, all this, it pleased his heart. But yet, it doesn't add up to keep your life and to keep you in the game. It doesn't add up. You can put it all on one balance. It doesn't add up. You can either multiply it. It doesn't add up. It's because he loves you. Because he loves me. You dance for me and God released me from the hospital. Because he loves me. Listen to me. I'm overwhelmed by his love because even when I think about all the amazing things that I think about Jesus and how special he is to me and all that I will do for him and so on, it is like, bruh, bruh. it's like, it's, I don't know have a word in English for that. It's zero. Nada. Nil. It's too small. I do my best. But sometimes I find myself riding outside of the margin. Not like some of you always ride in the margin. I'm speaking to true Christians. My righteousness cannot deserve me for God to keep me in the game. I have made some decision I wish I had not made. Yet he loves me. <laughs> there are words I spoke I wish I had not. And I wish I could take back. But I can't. Yet he loves me. There are thoughts that cross my mind. There are not thought that can be exposed on the podiums because they don't pass the standard of righteousness at the smallest level. But yet, he loves me. Amen. You could open the closet of my life and see many dry bones and worms that will make some of you crawl out of this. But yet, he loves me. <laughs> I don't know about you. I've come to talk to real people who understand their real life and know <laughs> how sure they are fallen of the glory of God. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I feel like I can throw my fist in the wall and smack my table and run everything out. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Don't run out of the house. It is the truth. Yet, he loves me. Yeah, he loves me. It's because he loves you. It's not because of your doing, of your fancy righteous behavior, and amazing Polish obedience. <laughs> it's because he loves you. <laughs> you know, he loves you so much that sometimes it's his grace that keeps you from doing certain things. Okay, you hear me, hear me, hear me. Let, me. let me push a little bit, one, three more minutes. Because you have a resurrected man, I need to preach a little longer. I'm reminded of the brothers of Joseph. I didn't say the friend, I said the brothers. Joseph was sent to go meet them in the field, you remember that? And you see what they did to Joseph? Huh? Now, watch me. <laughs> if Joseph never went in the field, they would have never known what they have in themselves. There are certain places God, by his grace, prevents you to fall not into. 
And you think it's because you are so powerfully righteous. The, the reason is, is because God prevent Joseph to show up. But once in a while, he will release Joseph to show up. So you can discover your rottenness, your wickedness, your unrighteous being. Am I speaking to somebody? It's not because you are so holy and so righteous. It's because by his grace, he withheld you not to be exposed to certain things. Magadoya. Some of you, you are raw, raw, and raw, and raw, and raw. But you don't know about it because grace has kept you away from manifesting your rawness. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's humble ourselves and know it's not by your strength, it's not by your might, it's not by your righteousness, it's because he loves you. Because he loves you. They will have never known how much hatred is in their heart <laughs> until the boys show up. They begin to realize they are killers and, and murderers and wicked people. But until then, they are all walking to the church holy. Because, oh, somebody killed somebody. Oh, my God. Oh, the, this was a demon in these people? Oh, my God. How can this man do such an evil and sick action? That was a demon. He need deliverance. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Be thankful that by grace, he have withheld a lot of stuff from you. And from me, so you don't get exposed to it. Am I speaking to somebody? Paul said, the thing I wish to do, I do not do. The thing that I do not want to do, I find myself doing it. Who will redeem me from such a wretched body? None but Christ. The one you love is in need. Until you understand that just because God loves you, that's why you are here. You will never understand the power of his grace over your life. Today I come to tell you, he loves you. And that's why he kept you in the game. And I want to encourage few of you as you stand up on your feet right now. Stay in the game. Because he loves you. Stay in the game because he loves you. Stay in the marriage because he loves you. Stay in that business, whatever you do, because he loves you. Stay in your rightful mind because he loves you. Stay in that ministry because he loves you. Stay in the place where you are because he loves you. Stay in the game. Stay in the game. Sometimes you have to stay in the game even when you are bleeding. Sometimes you have to stay in the game even when there is pain. Sometimes you have to stay in the game even when it doesn't work out the way you thought it will. This morning... Jesus is here to resurrect what is dead. And I come to prophesy to somebody, let it die. Let it die. Let it die. You've done all you could do, let it die. Why? Until it die. You will never know if it has a power in it to resurrect. You don't want to run with something that has not the ability to come back to life. As I was leading the hospital, the nurse said, the doctor said, you are R1, R1. Some of you in the medical field, you may understand. I said, what is R1? She said, oh, R1, you, you need to leave this on your fridge or whatever. If anything like that happened again, I say, no, it will never happen. 
<laughs> he said, but if anything like that happened, the R1 patient, they will do everything in their power to resurrect you, to resuscitate you. And I said, so you mean there are some people they give up on, they don't want to resuscitate anymore? He said, yeah. There are some where leave it alone, all right? Let them go. But you, we won't leave it alone. We will, either, we will try, we'll try everything to resuscitate you. And then the thought come to my mind, I say, resuscitate me. Okay. <laughs> if they resuscitate you, what you resuscitate will die again. I say, I don't need the power of resuscitation. I need the power of resurrection. I'm not speaking to somebody. This morning, God does not want to resuscitate your business or whatever is dead. God wants to resurrect what is dead, not resuscitate it. He wants to resurrect it because death could not hold him down. There is a power of resurrection in this place. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. He will believe in me. Even though he die, he will live again. I come to prophesy whatever has died in your life, whatever has died in your family, whatever has died in your house, it shall come to life again. You shall rise again. Somebody shout, yeah. Somebody shout, yeah. Somebody proclaim, I will rise again. I will rise again. My marriage will rise again. My health will rise again. My business will rise again. My finance will rise again. My children will rise again. My ministry will rise again. Somebody give a praise to the Lord. Magaya, lagaya, magaya. I want we pray and bring forth to life what is dead. Pastor Kofi, come here, get the microphone. We're going to pump this thing for you. Get ready for me there. Probably nothing die in you or in your house. There is no nothing sick. But I know there are at least one or two people in this house who need a resurrection for something. As he kept me in the game, this morning, by the resurrection power that rose Christ from the dead, yes. it is available because we know him. In the fellowship with his suffering and in the power of his resurrection. I don't want you to wait for somebody to resurrect you. I want you to use the anointing that is available today. The power that is available in this house and say enough is enough. I am not sick, but I'm sick and tired. Something need to come back to life. Something need to rise up again. There is a man here, a brother, who need to rise up again. There is a woman who need to rise up again. I must speak to somebody. I must speak to somebody. I must speak to somebody. Let's raise our voice and begin to prophesy, we will rise up again. I will rise up again. Come on, pick it up. Come on.
and give order. Ah, we command and give order. Yes. This morning, we want you to begin to give order. The year, as our father said, the year is not over. It is not over. Whatever that is in 2019, this morning we take it by force. Whatever that God has destined for you 2019, we take it by force. Somebody get wild. 